sitting on the heads of these bolts here, this pulley needs to go back over the other way just a little bit. All right, well, no luck on this. That ain't gonna work. So what I need to do is completely redisassemble all this, take this spacer and put it over here to shift this fan over that way because right now it's hitting on the heads of these bolts right here. But that gum, I don't wanna have to. I hate we're having to redo something I just did, but. All right, Andy, I don't need you to be my muscle today. Uh, uh, something happened in my back Friday, Friday night. I don't know what. Yeah, getting uh, getting old uh, really sucks. But uh, yeah, I sit in my easy chair. Or I, I, sit in, I sit in my recliner Friday night. I went to get up and I was like, ooh. Hey, no I don't know what happened. I don't know where I twisted or turned or pulled pulled up, but yeah. Oh, we must have gotten the best of you. Must have, so I'm, I'm a little stiff this morning. But before we get back on this combine, I had a visit for some good friends of mine from uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Came up here and did some work for me on Saturday. Yep, Brian from uh, Front Row Detailing, him and his son came up and uh, gave this truck a ceramic coat. And, woo, look at that. Black beauty. Of course, they didn't have to do a whole lot of uh, paint restoration on this truck because it's so new, but anyway, it is fully protected. Uh, hopefully for the uh, 10, 15, 20 years I'm gonna own it, it's gonna be looking just as good then as it is now. Anyway, uh, been super pleased with them. If you need anything ceramic coated, your vehicle, uh, farm equipment, uh, houseboat, pontoon boat, they do it all, motor home. Uh, be sure to give them a call, go to their landing page uh, that, they got, uh, that, that they got set up for our farm and that will get you an extra discount. All right, Andy, let's get this thing done first. Uh, go ahead and uh, pull it out. I gotta make some calls to get some uh, nitrogen for our wheat order because we gotta make, the weather allows, we gotta make two trips over our nitrogen this week, spraying for herbicides and uh, putting out some nitrogen. So I'm gonna figure out what we need, get that order. Go ahead and get that thing back out and. Put on the workbench and we'll swap some swaps and we'll swap some some shims around. Take two, got it back in. A lot better, but we still got one one of these blades that's hitting the head of the bolt, just barely rubbing. So I've taken all the adjustment out of it I can, moving shims from this side over to this side, scooting it that far as much as possible. The only thing left to do is take a grinder to the one that's hitting and just knock a little bit off right there shouldn't affect the performance at all but 
That's the only thing I know to know to do. I mean, it could wear down, but it could be uh, creating sparks and stuff, and uh, don't want that on the combine. So I'm gonna try grinding grinding that down and see if that solves my problem. Oh yeah, much much better now. All right, all we to do is put the plate on, put the belt on, and she should be good good to go. All right, Carter, we're ready for your muscles. Been doing all that working out at the gym. We got a gearbox put back on. You and you and Andy can lift it up while I get the bolt started. This gearbox over here is gonna go on the bottom of the unloading auger. Hope, uh, before we do that, let's get this thing twisted back around and back up in there. All right, we kind of run into a problem. As you can tell, that auger has dropped down. I think it happened whenever Andy was uh, cleaning the spline stuff, kind of rotated and slipped down. And what that caused, you can see down in there, because that uh, vertical auger to come off the splines of the upper gearbox there. So now not only do we have to lift it up, we got to lift it up and get the splines aligned. Plus, we got to get the auger timed with the horizontal auger so the flightings don't hit. All right, what we found out is luckily on that uh, splines on the gearbox, it's got one wide too. So it only goes on there one way, which helps time it up with the vertical auger. So... And he's going to kind of be up here, I reach his arm there, try and guide it onto the shaft, and then me and Kelly be on the bottom, trying to shove it up there. <laughs> oh, he's been pretty good hitting the hole. We'll, we'll see if that hole's true. All right, ready? All right. All right, All right pull the bar out. Okay. All right, Andy, tell us what you need. Can't go up anymore. <sighs> <sighs> All right, Carl, we twist a little bit. Uh, no, that's going to be too much. Too much. All right, Kelly, stick the bar in. Okay. All right, Carl, rest. This whole thing turns up here. Uh-huh. So was it turning while we were twisting? Yeah. The actual, like, not the, not the bottom of the top can spin, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's all connected through that 90 degree gearbox. All right, we got pressure going up. Quit twisting it, Carter. Let him do the twisting. You pull, pull the bar out, Kelly. Stick Ready? it up under. Stick it up under the. Where? 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 Right up under that. It's not going to come up underneath there. Hey, right, hold, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. My arm's cramping up. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Right, there it is. Okay. All right, so I'm hold it up here. All right Kelly, stick, stick it all the way through. Where? On the top part? No, oh, right down through there. Go. No, over this side, going to the other hole. It won't. It won't. It won't. It won't. It won't. See? It doesn't. All right, just bark harder. You got it. It doesn't. Yeah, but look, it's not holding it. Now we have to hold this right here. Well, it's just going to have to be twisted now that it's up on there. Hold on, no. hold on. Let me get the cramp out of my arm. What do you need? We're, we're going we're to have to rotate it to where you can stick the ball all the way through. Okay. Carter, how confident do you feel on supporting the weight of that thing yourself? It's not heavy, is it? I don't know. Extremely heavy. I mean, you've, you've probably been doing 80% of the lifting so far. Give me a, let me hold her for a second. All right. Push up on the Carter. All right, slowly pull your ball up, bar out, Kelly. All right, it's out right now, Carter. Have you got it? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Andy, you're going to rotate it. All right, ready? Well, yeah. Pull your bar out a little bit more there, Kelly. A little keep bit more, going. keep going. Keep going. Whoa. I see, keep going. All right. All right, Carter. I hope so, let go. Yep, that's where, yeah. it, that's where it needs to be. All right, good job, guys. This is going to be a whole lot harder going on than it was. We, we had gravity working with us. Now you got gravity working against you. All right, me and Carter are going to try and lift the gearbox up, and then you're going to have to probably rotate that sprocket on the side to get it completely lined up. To... All right, Carter, I got this edge. You just get that edge. 
Hold on. Carter, you're Hold trying on. to lift up the whole thing. Just get your, just get that edge over there. I'm gonna get a cramp on that. I'm gonna get a cramp now. Hold on. Uh. Catch him down on your side a little bit. Do I? It's gotta go in just like that, right? Right, Where's that? that? Where's the bolt? The nut? All of it. Got it. Is it it's, not, it's not even in the teeth no, yet? No, not, not even one. We can just get the nut on there. I think, I think if, I think if I take the nut off this and we can get one, get the nut, get a nut started on that side over there, that'd be the best thing. Yeah, because it's pulling it the yeah. wrong way this way. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I got the gearbox, you can take the nut off. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. Someone give me a nut. Where are they at? Hang on. Alright, everybody rest up for a minute. The problem is, the problem is the auger can float around. The gearbox is going to float around all the while we're trying to lift up some rusty splines on rusty splines. Yeah. Okay. All right, what we need on top is we need a bunch of longer bolts or one longer bolt to let that side go down. Mm -hmm. So let me go get some yeah, other bolts and all right, we're going to put one long one on the front, one long one on the back. Mm -hmm. That way we can go up at an even rate. Uh, the problem is those threads are not going to be long. So, all right. So, we're going to tighten these up incrementally. Then we might put a little bit shorter bolts on this side and just slowly kind of draw it up that way. Just kind of keep it level. Oh, for now. Okay. Is it, or is it pushing up on the auger? Yeah, it is. Alright, now we should just kind of rock that sprocket back and see. forth and see if it'll drop down on there. I'm holding this in place. Oh, it almost grabbed right there. I think that's, I think that's it. Oh no, is it? I can't tell. Alright, let me see. The flashlight is not in the right place. Let me see if I can tighten it up a little bit more. Oops. It's going up in there, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, All right, tighten this up. Yep, it's going up in there. Oh, I can't. All right. Ah, oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. But now, wait, hold on. Can I take this bar out now? Hold on. There it is. All right. Yeah, she's up there. Uh, All right. Well, arm day's done. What's hope, next? Leg day? I hope that was the hardest <laughs> job of all this combine. All right, see you back up there now. Nice and smooth. All right, uh, hand me that bucket of gear all over there. Let me put some oil, oil in here and stick the chain back on. All right, next on our list of fun, fun projects is uh, got to pull that ro black rotary screen off and replace the brushes around it. And he's been studying on it for a couple days. He's been chomping for a bit to get to this, and so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let him take the lead on it. <laughs> Good luck. Well, luckily I've done done that job before. I think three years ago. Yeah. I just don't remember exactly how I did it. Maybe, maybe, like, maybe between both of us, we'll remember it for the when it, ever the third time comes around. Yeah, when it's going, if there's a new new combine that's going to be built completely different. <laughs> Check out these new brushes I got, so Kelly can comb her back hair with it. Comb your back hair with it. Thank uh, you, you, you you shake my back hair off. I did, I did. Yeah, that's lovely. All right, Andy's got uh, one uh, the evaporator out of the way, then putting the gear puller on there to kind of reverse use it because that shaft on the screen goes through that house, and he's going to use it to push it out at least part of the way till the car gets down here with the forklift, to, so we can stand on the edge and grab it. Up a little more.
All right, hold up, Carter. That's as far open as that door is going to go. All right, keep the hold this panel out. No, no, this this one right here. Hold, put, keep it pulled out. Just keep pull pull on it out. All right, go ahead. not connected to the red. All right, well, part of the problem is we didn't take this belt off here. Oh. Should have taken the belt off. All right, take, go ahead and take that pull uh, that uh, puller off where we can close that door. I don't guess you can roll it out that way, can you? Oh. <laughs> All right, let's close this up. Close, close that bar, Kelly. Pick it straight up. Well, that's what? The shaft is. Alright. Alright, Carter, help me. Grab it. Grab it. I'm not grabbing. Something. Alright, Andy, I got it. Sure? Yep. Alright, Carter, beam me down. You can still see the anti seize on this shaft where I put it on there last time. Now, I, I don't remember how we got that thing pressed back in there. And I didn't you do YouTube at the when I did this, so I can't go back to old videos and look. All right, what we gotta do is drill out each one of these rivets and then pop rivet the new one back on. All right, what we're doing here is we're uh, replacing this brush that goes around the edge of this rotary screen and that just helps seal dirt and dust from uh, getting up there into the radiator, which, I mean, it already does anyway, but as this brush wears, it seals off less and less, so, plus it gets all this soybean dust in here, and then it gets hard, hard, and, you know, the brushes aren't near as effective, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to place this brush that goes all the way around, it's a three-piece brush. Oh, it's all the other pieces over there, okay. Just like so. Mm. And get us back to, get us back to, to sealing up good. got this thing uh, riveted back but it's quitting time we'll get back on this uh, tomorrow morning before we go Carter got some weight lifting for you to do got something need to get out of the back of my truck I'll grab that hydraulic motor come on let me see them muscles boy see you grunt Oh, look at it. Go sit on the shop table. Them girls gonna be dialing you up tonight. Yeah, that's right. We got our uh, hydrostatic drive motor back a little earlier than what I was anticipating. All right, if you remember a few days ago, just a seal kit, a one seal and seven O-rings from Case IH was $668. I had this motor take it over to my friends at more pumps they completely disassembled it put those seals and o-rings back together inspected it all put it on their test stand and gave it back to me it showed nowhere in the motor and everything which that was my main question because the machine's got like four thousand hours on it so if the motor's not showing anywhere i doubt the hydrostatic pump's not showing much wear so uh not really concerned about the drive system on the combine now that i've had it tested but they did all of that for $500. Took it apart, inspected it, run it through the test stand and everything else and put it back together with the new sales for $500. So definitely uh, definitely the right decision. Not only did I save some money, I know that all of this is in good shape. and got the peace of mind that my hydrostatic pump most likely is not gonna go out or it's not gonna go out because it's worn out anyway. It, something can still happen, it could run a bunch of contaminants through the hydraulic system but i have a good, real good feeling that the hydrostatic system is in real good shape now but 
anyway i guess we'll save uh we'll save this for the morning put it back on plus the screen and then i don't know what we're we still probably like at least a hard day's worth of work on the combine but we got to go to the field and uh we got we got to spray some wheat here this week so might still be a few days before we get this sucker wrapped up and out of here all right today andy and kelly gonna take a break from uh uh working on combine because we got some wheat that needs to be sprayed all right before andy gets started spraying we're putting in a couple uh plots here all right andy uh put one that's got the u on it here for unsprayed all right, and then uh, on the very other end, we'll put uh, one one that's got the S on there for sprayed, and then I'll spray one pass down through here that doesn't have the fungicide added, and then we'll have strips on either side without the fungicide, so we can see if there's any uh, see if there's any kind of positive yield response from having a fungicide versus not having a fungicide. So we'll spray one strip this way, and then we got a slough right on the other side and then i'll move over a few more passes and we'll spray another uh strip that doesn't have the fungicide in there and do the, do the same thing right. what we're doing now is uh first thing we're doing is we're making a, a post emergence mainly a herbicide pass over our wheat to uh, kill uh, any kind of winter weeds that we got out here so they got got a little bit of hen bit right there uh scout said saw, saw just a little bit of wild garlic you know nothing major see there's a there's a little bit more just uh cleaning up any winter weeds so they don't compete with the crop and then uh also putting out an insecticide out here for aphids because with a warm february we've had sure we're starting to get some aphids out here that's transmitting the barley yellow dwarf virus so we put out a insecticide when we applied our nitrogen in january uh, that's mo most likely played out by now, so we're adding uh, a lambda size, another insecticide to take care of the aphids. And then, like I said, what we're doing with these plots, my scouts got recommended to put out uh, a fungicide. And normally I don't like doing that this early in the year because generally disease pressure is not a problem. And a lot of uh, ag companies have got recommending one, I mean, not only to sell more product, they say it gives you some kind of a yield boost, but they say they usually recommend doing it even in the absence of any disease just to kind of prevent disease, which I don't really like that kind of way of thinking. It promotes resistance in our crop to uh, uh, of like these funguses to the chemicals that we apply. You know, uh, I prefer to wait until disease pressure is either already just starting or is imminent and usually during grain field usually in the vegetative stages uh, a disease is not going to be a problem i'm not saying it can't be a problem but it's just not normally a problem so anyway we're what we're going to do is we'll have two replicated strips here to determine if there's any kind of yield response from the fungicide in there or not i did question the scout about this and he said he had because of the warm february he had seen some disease starting in some fields not necessarily mine but you know the conditions are right this time of year or they have been for disease to get started i don't like just taking anybody's recommendations just because they say so i like to test it myself and that's what we're doing here you know we'll we got uh we're gonna have two strips that are unsprayed with a fungicide and then right on the each side of it we're going to have strips that have a fungicide on it and then when it comes time to harvest we can harvest these strips and see if there's any kind of yield difference and see if there's any kind of return on investment so i'm going to spray these two strips right here and then i'll turn the sprayer over to andy and uh reckon me and carter will get back on the combine 